ultimately, I hope that I influence anybody that I interact with, not just from Kempo, but just socially. Hey, everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming by. This is Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio, episode 428. And today, my guest is Mr. Joseph Conway. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host on this show, founder of Whistlekick, and a passionate martial artist. And I share that passion with you twice a week via this show. On Mondays, we bring you a guest interview, like today. On Thursdays, we bring you some kind of a topic. Sometimes it's just me. Sometimes another person comes on board, and we tackle some subject, some idea that we want to discuss. You can find everything that we've got going on with this show at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Everything from transcripts to links, photos, videos, and a whole bunch more. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Whistlekick.com is the place to go for everything that we do at Whistlekick. Because we're more than just this show. And in fact, we've got a store over there with a bunch of apparel, training products like uniforms and apparel. I already said apparel. Protective equipment. Yeah, we do that too. And if you use the code PODCAST15, that'll get you 15% off everything in the store. You can also see all the other things that we got going on. Now, today's guest is someone that, as I say in the interview, you're probably going to recognize in video, in photos. You might recognize his voice, but you probably don't know his name because you know him as a character, a character that is incredibly important within the context of what he does, but still a bit behind the scenes. And that's part of why we wanted him on the show, because there's so much going on here with this man, and he is so much more than this character that I wanted to talk to him. We talk about life, we talk about his martial arts history, and we talk about all the things that you might expect once you figure out who he is. So let's talk to him. Mr. Conway, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hey, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Beautiful day. Is it? Is it? What's it, the weather going on down, down your way? Well, I am actually currently visiting my mother in Galveston, Texas. So it's a bit, bit balmy, a bit warm, but, um, but beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, I ran on the beach this morning. It was kind of cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Baywatch style? Oh, yeah. In slow-mo, yeah. you know, just kind of like speed hitting, you know, just yeah. just. Yeah. Drug. <laughs> Drop the back of that. That way you can see all the 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 jiggly parts move. Right. Right. I mean that's <laughs> but that's what people tune in for is the jiggly parts. Oh, I got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners, you may not recognize today's guest by by name. Some of you are, are listening to the voice saying, I know that voice. But I'm gonna guess that virtually all of you would recognize him if we were doing this in video. And that's because you have the distinction of, I think, being hit more than anyone I've ever known. I, I've, I've watched you get beat up in some of the most ridiculous, creative, and entertaining ways that probably anyone on, on the planet holds the distinction of. It yeah, Guinness, really Guinness needs to get in touch with me. Yeah. yeah. You you, know. <laughs> have you ever done math on how many times you've been hit in the groin? Oh, man. Let me tell you. I, the quadratic equation, just to bring it back and around, just would, you know, boggle the mind. I, I often get questioned, do you have mumps? And I'm like, no, they just, they just haven't dropped yet. It's, it's, uh, those are my testicles that are just kind well, of... So you, you, th you threw a math joke at me, and my brain is half wandering away with that. <laughs> well, a squared plus B squared plus groin squared? I mean, how, yeah, do, we, yeah, uh, how, do, we, how do we pull that one back? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's an algorithm right that's how it they is about algorithms with with uh with algebra so that's what we're trying to do is create algorithms for for the for the inner space the interwebs by uh you know if you kick the nuts a lot hard and long enough you create an algorithm to get more you can make it go viral and, then, and guess it worked the first time you know the hundred ways it did it did. So, of course, listeners, if, if that's not enough information, if you're still going, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's got to be the voice because, you know, old, the old, old Todd Woodland just can't shut that guy up. He's always trying to <laughs> get his peace of mind in. Right. Absolutely. Well, t today, you know, today's <laughs> guest holds the distinction of being the Uki for Master Ken. 
And we thought, you know, there's a guy under there. there there's a guy who is more than Todd. You know, I didn't, right. didn't introduce you as Todd. And I'll confess yeah, that sure. when, when, when the guest form came through, I had to, in my brain, I had to make that connection from your name to Todd. <laughs> so it worked. Right. It didn't work. It was like, because I don't, I don't know you. I don't know you as Joseph Conway. Joseph Conway, right. So let's, it's, yeah, it's, that's awesome. Every t- everywhere we go, um, it's Todd. It's, it's actually become my alter ego. I, uh, it's not just a character. I actually have embraced Todd. I walk around with the, uh, the Todd arrogance, you know. How, how are, are Todd Woodland and, and Joseph Conway the same? Both love Perfect. getting hit, man. <laughs> that's that. So that yeah, that's that's exactly the truth. I mean, um, it, I practice uh, Kempo Karate, Jeff Speakman's Kempo Five Point and I was introduced to that by my best man uh, before our wedding. For as a wedding gift, he paid my first months over at uh, the Kempo School, and. Um, just immediately, just the physicality of it. I had done some BJJ before with uh, Alberto Crane. He was just getting started in Santa Fe, and but once I got into Kempo, man, that was that was a lot of fun. So, you know, it's a lot of um, a lot of st- choreographed striking and hitting. Um, so you kind of know where you're going to get the hit, so you can kind of brace up for it. And then um, when Matt and I were filming Enter the Dojo, he he just um, had me in as an extra because it was it's filmed at my karate studio, the ABQ Karate there in Albuquerque, and uh, he did the break the finger gig. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that one that you know break the finger, break the wrist, break the elbow, we stomp the groin. All that originated on Billy, the character Billy, but he's an actor and um, didn't like getting hit. So then. Uh, just by default, Matt went to me because Matt and I got our black belts together in Kimpo. And he said, let me, let me do this on you. And then from that point on, it was every time that he had to demonstrate something and to sell it, you know, I just, I would actually, I'd actually encourage him to hit me harder. You know, it's easier to sell something if, you know, if you're actually making some good contact. So. Yeah. Anybody that's done any acting, any stunt work knows that, you know, you get, you get that, that focal point, that center person the hero or or villain or whatever you know in this case that and but it requires so much from the people working with them to sell it to make it real because it doesn't matter how good you are if, if the people you're working with and it could just be you know a demonstration at a, a local strip mall mm-hmm. if those people you know in japanese ukis aren't working with you well the whole thing's lost so was that something you had a talent for early on and that's why he grabbed you second or was it something you grew into no i think it, it, it's very natural for me I, I don't know what it is i've always been kind of a ham you know and slap humor just constant and plus i i also am always eager to be the the uki for whoever it is like when jeff uh jeff speakman would be um doing a seminar i'd actually get kind of irritated if he didn't pick me because i i just like I just like the contact. I just and and then by being that in that position so often and putting myself in that position, I just kind of started getting the timing, the rhythm, just knowing, you know, how the reactions are supposed to be. What was what was that early stuff like? And and, and you know, we're obviously we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about you know your time on camera. We're we're, mm-hmm. we're gonna talk probably more about your time off camera, but I feel like mm-hmm. because people know you on camera, it, it feels appropriate to start there. Sure. So that early stuff, you know, you're, you're on camera, you guys are figuring things out. Did you know you had something that the martial arts community was going to respond to so strongly? No, you know, and um, Matt talks about it a lot, you know, about it. He's been in the film community for, you know, his almost his entire adult life. He studied out of, uh, one of the, the art schools in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And, and then when he moved to Albuquerque, he got part, uh, became part of the community of, of filmmakers there. And they always do these competitions, 48, um, where they film, they have like a competition where they need to film. They get a premise and they have 48 hours to make a, a, a show out of. And so he kind of adopted that idea, 
with also trying to trying to figure out what this uh, YouTube thing was. He he'd done a couple things on YouTube and it hadn't really done much. And he just asked me, "Hey, listen, I want to get together a few friends of mine and and film. Can we use your school? I have this idea for this this character, Master Ken." And I, I said, yeah, of course, you're welcome to use. And again, you know, we, we had trained together for a couple of years prior to this. And, um, and then I, and he said, and you know, if you want, I could use an extra in the, you know, a couple extra students. I said, oh, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. And so it was just set out to be this little weekend thing to put out on, 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 inter- on, on YouTube and on the internet. And then it just by far blew away anything else that he had put, um, under his brand. I think his brand, Riff Raff New Media is, is, if you look at that, he's got a lot of stuff, little shorts that he has in there. You'll recognize a lot of the other characters like Julie and they're all really good stuff, but for whatever reason, well, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a cult following. You know, you get these martial artists that were just starving for, you know, this um, recognition because, you know, a lot of the, the cool martial arts is, is, it's getting old, you know, you don't see a lot of Chuck Norris movies anymore. John Claude Van Damme, you know, there's just not a lot out there that's so kind of, kind of was a uh, good timing. I think. Absolutely. I, I think we as a community have always noticed the ridiculous things that we do, but there's oh, yeah. something about humor, comedy, whether it's stand up or satire that allows us to speak our truth. You listen to a lot of stand up comedians. They talk about that, the ability for them to get away with saying horrendous, politically incorrect things because <laughs> it's done with with humor and there's there's something there that i think we all crave and well speaking of other comedians my one of my favorite comedians jerry, uh, jerry seinfeld i i just watch all the stuff that, that he does and the behind the scenes and one of the things that, that i just keep relating to with what we're doing with what matt and i are doing and with what the the whole seinfeld you know explosion was is this should be the show we this this, what we're doing right now this should be the show because it was just we go through so many things that are just hilarious to us that we're thinking like we we we're even you know bouncing around an idea the idea of the misadventures of master ken and todd where we're going around and doing all these live shows which we are doing but then, but putting it in that same kind of context that we did with The Office, you know, with the mockumentary, where we actually think we're going out and teaching these um, seminars, but from the crowd's perspective, we're out there doing a comedy show, but we really believe that we're educating them um, with a Maradote. And, like it. and it's, gosh, the things that we just joke about and just, you know, write notes about, it just seems like that would be something that, you know, Netflix needs to pick up because they just moved into Albuquerque. They just need to reach out to us. That's we got to figure out how that's going to happen. Well, I hope they do. I hope they do. <laughs> you know, we, we got a little bit of, of process of how you guys work when, when we were fortunate enough to have Mr. Page on back way back episode 47. And what am I? 248. You're, you're going to be 428. It looks like nice. So it's been, it's been a little while. All right. It's been a little while. Uh, listeners, if you haven't checked out that episode, you should. It That episode holds the distinction of the first one, maybe, maybe not the only one, but the only one at least up through now, where I had to mute the microphone and bite my hand because <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Um, I, I've, I've, I've caught Matt on a number of other shows and he, he went hard for us and I really appreciate it. He, he, made up some pretty good stuff on the spot i mean his improv is phenomenal oh, i'm telling you that you know try to be his stand-up try to be his his uh, straight man you know that's that's tough now I'll, t- I'll take talent anywhere that you want you know as far as taking a hit and whatnot but being able to keep myself from just imploding when he when he starts improving and i have to maintain character at times that is, that in itself is a task and I, I don't think a lot of people could do you know, especially when we're doing like when we did um, America's Got Talent, a lot of it got cut out. But his banter back and forth with Simon was epic. It was just they and, you know, most people think of uh, Simon as being the harshest of the judges. But he and Matt were just clicking. They were just clicking. And then, you know, unfortunately, didn't end, end up well for us. But it was a really great experience, I thought. Yeah, I, I got the impression, again, because I've only seen the edited version, I got 
the impression that the audi- uh, the judges didn't really understand. No. And so it made me wonder, do you really, do you need to have roots in martial arts for the humor to make sense? Not anymore. And I'm glad that you brought that up because the live show that we're doing now, it's, it, you know, because what, what I think most people w- knew us about back when that first aired was the hundred ways to hit the groin, you know, and that's really funny to watch with sound effects and, you know, um, reaction and, and sped, sped up video, but to try and put that into an act is not, you know, not really going to sell, you know, especially when you're trying to engage um, a crowd. But over time, since then, we've developed this live show that just kills. We, um, we've got, a, I think we've got about two hours worth of material and we'll cut and paste 15 minute segments to meet whatever demographic we're hitting. So like, for example, this year we were in Raleigh North Carolina, and we we performed for the Caterpillar, that huge. Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah. So we we did so we did a corporate event for them, and and that was a, that when we went in with with um, with one of our hands tied behind our back because right literally right before we're getting ready to go on the show, the um, the guy who was hosting us, um, he 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 came up and he said, "Listen, you know we've had a really bad situation." We we have had a tragedy where one of a couple of our people were killed in, in Florida. But go have a good show. <laughs> wow. So, so what'd you so, do? Um, yeah, so Matt and I looked at each other was like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> so but regardless, but the thing was is that when, when we were finished with, with our show, um it, it killed. They did it, oh, excuse the pun. It did really well. And we, it wouldn't have been a pun if you hadn't brought, <laughs> brought attention to it. Sorry, I know. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you. I go. I go dark. Um, but um, uh, but it did really, really well. And and the folks there were very appreciative of us. They they're talking about bringing us back out to Charlotte for this this huge um, convention that they do. Um, we'll see how, how that works out. But then, so from that, then we were in Toronto uh, just a few weeks ago, and we did uh, kids. Uh, seminar so we we could take it down a notch to where you know if you watch the show it's very edgy and you know it has a lot of innuendo but we were able to put a full hour together for some kids at a camp so and of course you know the all the martial arts events we we do we will actually get on the mat we do a live seminar that's 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 a fun one where we're actually having a seminar you know people on that we did uh one in um in San Diego, uh, achieve martial arts, I think it was. Um, but uh, and so, and then there's this just the actual stand up where we're up on stage. We did one in New Jersey that uh, we're up on stage, and uh, and like I say, we just cut out of that uh, the material, and 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 most of the times we you know we can run over. We're like, oh man, that we're 15 minutes over our mark. Then we stick around for a while and. Um, meet the people, uh, do shot, do, do pictures with them, and then you know occasionally the host will take us out to dinner, and that's you know that's that's the that's the the really fun stuff. Like you and I were talking pre-show about how you get down and you sit and you have your stories after the fact. And the funny thing is, is that's where we get some material. People telling us their crazy stories. You know, Master Ken would love this situation, and and Matt's sitting there listening, and he looks at me and he's telling me. You know, with his with his thighs there, be sure to take notes on this one. <laughs> we gotta have that. We gotta add that one to the show. Yeah. Now I think it's pretty obvious how the martial arts comes into the comedy, but how has the sh- how is the show how how has this humor changed your martial arts? Well, um, I've I've never really taken myself too seriously. You know, I um. I just see myself, I just really enjoy the martial arts kind of lifestyle because it's, it's not, it's not just about being on the mat, what you're doing on the mat. It's, it's the whole, the whole thing, you know, waking up a martial artist, going to bed a martial artist. It's, it's not just, okay, well, I'm in the dojo now. I'm going to turn it on. It's just, um, it's, it's, and so when you have that kind of 
I don't want to say stress or pressure, but that, you know, I, you kind of put that on yourselves. Like we, um, we have a saying in, in Jeff Speakman's organization that you lead by example. And, and so I always, I, I wear a wristband that I've put on since 2003 when I joined this organization that says that to remind me that I, I have so many eyes on me on how I conduct myself, you know, not again, not just on the mat, all over the place. So when you have all that pressure and all that stress and you, and you know that you, you really got to lead by example, it's, it's nice to be able to cut loose sometimes and, you know, make fun of yourself and make, you know, because, you know, some of the stuff, some of the stories that I tell them that, that I go through end up being in the show. And, you know, of course, all of the, the stuff that somehow gets to him, Matt being, uh, who I'm talking about, Matt is able to, to take this information and put a real comedic spin on it. And, you know, he's just brilliant. That, you know, and, and I'll use this opportunity just to really put him on a pedestal for a second because, you know, not a lot of people know that. He does everything, you know, not only is he, you know, master Ken, but he's, he's coming up with the ideas a lot of the time running them by me. And then we put them together. But then after that, he's, he's the one editing the show. He's the one doing the sound. He's just, um, he's the one that's managing the live show now. So whenever somebody calls or, or emails, you know, this guy is just full time, 12, 14 hours a day trying to promote this and you know and originally he was just trying to do that and his acting career but this is just pretty much taken over all of that and, and you know again i hope the hard work pays off for him because you know he's really sacrificed a lot for it he, he has he has and he does a phenomenal job and anyone who hasn't taken a a passion and tried to turn it into a career you know it, it might be hard to understand but if you've done that you know how challenging it can be and especially in the martial arts. I mean, if you look at martial arts careers and then you take out owning and operating a martial arts school, there's not a lot left. And mm -hmm. there aren't a whole lot of us trying to start martial arts businesses. And I, I think this is one of the things that Matt and I have kind of connected over. You know, we, you know, I, re, we, I reach out once in a while, you know, we chat periodically and we were trying, there was something we were trying to do. We were trying to find a comedy angle for something. And I was like, Matt's done it. Yeah. Some, Ma yeah. Master Ken's done everything. And it, it's, it's like, I don't know if you've seen that South Park episode. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Yeah. And I reached out to him. I was like, it's just like that. I said, do you know how frustrating it is to try to find something in the martial arts that's humorous that you haven't done? And he said, actually, yes. We struggle with it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll think we're, we've tapped the well, you know, like that's it. We're done. And then next thing you know, some, it, 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 you know, it's, it's always going to refill itself. You know, it's, there's, there's just too many characters, too many incidents, too many things that, that go on that, that, we, that we sensationalize, you know, I mean, obviously all of the things aren't as bad as, as we make it, but, you know, but, you know, in today's society though, you know, sometimes we even have to kind of take, make a, make fun of how the culture is right now and, and put a, put a little bit of a martial arts spin on it. Mm. Absolutely. So let's talk about you and, and your martial arts and your training. You, you said that you'd had a little bit of experience before you started in Kempo, but you, you fell in love with it right away. I did. Yeah. So what, what was it? Let's, let's go a little deeper into, okay. into that because quite often the second martial art for someone doesn't do anything. If, if anything, from you know, my personal experience, from conversations on this show, People find that their second martial art makes them miss their first martial art. Oh, right. Well, you know what's funny <laughs> is that it, it's also almost come full circle. I've, I've come back to BJJ, but I'll back up a little bit before I go there. It's, um, when, I, when I first got introduced to um, Kempo, um, I went into a class by that a gentleman by the name of Larry Hamilton was teaching. And I come to find out years later that Larry was um, studying um, Larry Tatum's uh, videos. So he had a very Larry Tatum movement to him, you know, his precision, his power, his, you know, just the way that that Kempo uh, snap works. And, um, and that I was like, wow, this is, this is really dynamic. I love the way he moves. So I really try. And so it, I, 
it probably has with a lot of people has a lot to do with who their instructor is. You can, you can even say that for your best college course, you know, this, this instructor was amazing because this person, this instructor was amazing. I went off into this field. So I was again, introduced by this amazing guy, Larry Hamilton. And, um, I, and my, one of my biggest influences was my training partner at the time, uh, who is now a huge um, part of Jeff Speakman's organization. His name is T uh, Tony Potter. And he and I went with, with Larry Hamilton and we trained together. And just loved the way he, he moved it and hit with, if you've seen any of the Larry Tatum videos, uh, then Larry Hamilton moved just like him. And then as the internet became more and more uh, popular and, and you can find stuff on YouTube, then Paul Mills, when I saw that a big guy, because Larry Hamilton is a smaller, statured person, I'm a bigger guy. I'm like six two, you know. I'm 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 struggling between two hundred and three hundred pounds, just depending on 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 how late I eat at night. But Paul Mills seemed like a like like a pretty big guy, and he moved as fast, if not faster, than Larry Tatum. But his power of his strikes just were so dynamic, and so I would just watch video and video of him and then i'd go and i'd hit the bobs because i couldn't hit people the way bob does because <laughs> you see those videos and you know, and you can you can you can feel it through the video and the, you know that's that's uh and that was the thing i just loved the efficiency of it i and then and then so what happened was after i did a couple of classes with larry then immediately i went out and bought the infinite insights so i started reading those by ed parker and I, and I was like, oh, okay, this is something that I need. Because BJJ, went to, when I was taking that with Mr. Crane, there wasn't a lot of structure to it. It's just time on the mat. You know, I need structure. I need, you know, something to refer back to. I need, a, you know, like the Infinite Insights or the Encyclopedia Kempo and, and understanding the written version of why it was necessary to have marriage or gravity or directional harmony or all these terms that are used in Kempo. And I was like, yeah, this, this is what, this is what really helped me and understand it. Cause then I took just the visual added the, the written aspects of it. And then I was able to combine it. And that worked for me to, to start developing my own kind of style. Hmm. You know, and fast forward, we were talking and, you know, before we, we went live here that mm -hmm. you've, had to em embrace some of the the aspects of teaching, you know, with titles and whatnot. They're yeah. not terribly comfortable with. Tell, tell me, tell me about that struggle. Well, you know, um, so I'll I'll even back it up. When I first met Jeff Speakman, it was um, he had a school in Albuquerque that was ran ran by a gentleman by the name of Steve Holden, who um, I became very close friends with because you know, again, you know, just interacting with with uh, these people you end up becoming close they become family so to speak but but they had a falling out and mr speakman asked me to run the school for him and i had never ever been you know in that position um i was i wouldn't say i was the highest rank but i had done a couple of privates with him i, I think he liked the way i moved and he liked the fact that i also understood you know the concepts and principles so when, when mr speakman asked me to open the school um in Albuquerque or take over the school that Mr. Holden was holding, you know, I was very hesitant to do so. I didn't feel, you know, worthy of that. But then he, um, he ensured me that what his plan was, was to move to Albuquerque and just to kind of keep it going for him until he got there. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So I, I started that, I think it was 2003 and, um, Lo and behold, it never came to fruition. He ended up moving from Lake Arrowhead to Las Vegas, Nevada. But over time, um, I, be, uh, I started really enjoying the teaching. Um, I, I really, what I really, really got um, engulfed in was, was teaching kids. And that's, that's where, again, the whole lead by example thing came in. Is I just really, I know that we have such an influence on these young minds that I, I would, I try to be a positive influence to where they're going to, whenever they, they leave my school for whatever reason, they have confidence in themselves, they're disciplined and they know that, you know, if they try hard, they get things back in return. And, and that's when it started um, 
paying off for me. That's when I started realizing that it didn't really have to do with anything other than the influence I could make on the community and the younger kids. Because sometimes, you know, when you're, you're older, you're pretty much set in your ways. Um, but I learned how to teach adults by teaching kids because I could, I could really dummy it down for the kids, which then made me communicate better to adults. And ultimately, I hope that I influence anybody that I interact with, not just from Kimple, but just socially, you know, that they're going to walk through life with a little more confidence in themselves, a little more hop in their step and, and, you know, can reflect on it in a very positive way. Was there a point when you started to recognize that you were good at teaching? Oh, man. <laughs> for, for most martial arts instructors, there's a point. There's a point where they go from, I can't do this. I'm not good enough to do this. Then they start to like doing it, even though they don't feel that they're ready. And then most instructors that I talk to get to a point where they say, you know what? I'm doing some good work here. I'm having an impact. It's pretty clear that you've crossed that line. So do you remember when it was? Um, let's see. I, gosh, it was a while back. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure exactly. That, that, that's a good thing. If you said, oh, you know, it was last week. Yeah, I don't know if they believe you. You know, about 10 minutes ago, I was feeling pretty calm. <laughs> Actually, you know, each, um, I think, I think it, was when, when Mr. Speakman actually asked me to teach the class, uh, or you know, or, or or to take over his school, because you gotta you gotta take into account that this is probably the most iconic person I've ever met, and for him to ask me to brunch, and then to ask me to run his school was was pretty, you know, um, out of this world for me, um, because I because another reason why I took the first tempo class. Of course was the perfect weapon you know that was an incredible movie and it, it was really dynamic and a lot of people can can say that they um they, they got into martial arts because of that movie and here i am sitting across the table from him and he's he has confidence he had confidence in me to do that for him and you know he has a lot on the line you know as far as his reputation goes so um at that point it's like okay maybe i you know if this guy thinks i'm okay, then maybe I should really start developing this. Okay. And, and it's one other moment that I'm curious. Okay. Of, and, that, and that's the moment when you knew he wasn't coming back to take over that school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, it's one thing to do something temporarily, to, right. to throw your heart into it, to set a certain standard. But when you find out that that temporary is now permanent or at least indefinite Jeez. it was yeah well you know he he had he had family there um his his both his his i think both of his parents and his sister at the time were all living there even his brother were there and then you know through time the you know i think his sister's the only one who's left there now and you know so he didn't have the same uh, motivation without the whole family there. And um, so it was probably about three years in, like 2006. And, you know, and he was in the, uh, 2000, it, cause he started introducing the, the 5.0 around, I, when I met him in 2003, and, you know, and, and kind of worked with him in the school there, that was, he was in the, the very beginning stages of his 5.0 journey. And, um, he, and uh, luckily I was there from the, pretty close to the beginning he had already started it a couple years prior to me but um he was introducing the grappling aspect of it the groundwork that we had to address in Kempo that you know with the popularity of, of the Gracies and the UFC and, and all the things that they were doing and he you know so when he um when he when he introduced that I was fortunate enough to, you know, even though I was running his school, because I was running his school, I was able to travel and share that knowledge that he was giving with me here in the States. Like I went to um, 
Australia with the Don and Suzanne Woods in Brisbane and um, David Giovinco in Sydney. And I was able to kind of share with what Mr. Speakman was sharing with me. Um, and he was really in pushing the 5-0 to a bunch of different um, Kimpo people at the time. And so once I found out that he was so engaged in trying to bring that worldwide, I figured that his priority wasn't Albuquerque anymore. And, so, you know, because he was, because now we've grown to, I think, almost 30 countries. And I think we are to date the biggest Kimpo organization to ever exist as a, as a whole. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's, uh, since, since then, it's just, he's, he put it, he changed his focus to bringing that out. And, in fact, um, there's talk, there's, there's, there's rumbles that, that they're going to give him his, his uh, master's, his 10th degree uh, in 2020. Oh, wow. Which wow, that's... I'm very proud to say I'll be eligible to test for my fifth in the very same test. I would, so that's another thing that Mr. Speakman does that really inspires me in that whole lead by example. He gets in every test. He, he, you know, when he's testing for 10th, he's, he's in line with us, banging with us, you know, and so it's, it's not like he's just taking this honorary 10th. He's, he's, he's physically going in, performing his kata. He's getting in the technique lines, banging with us. So, you know, we can really, really respect that. <clears throat> mm, super cool. Super cool stuff. Now you've mentioned travel. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and being able to to go around and and you know you're traveling for for other reasons now too. Right, that's a blast. Yeah, and you get to hang out with with different martial artists and, and mm -hmm. you know engage with them. What are they saying to you? You know, what are those conversations like? Are there themes that come up? You know what? What we hear more often than not, and especially you know, and, and I hate to keep on bringing up the climate of today. But if people need an escape from stuff, so mostly what we hear are thank you. You know, thank you so much for, for making us laugh today. Thank you so much for bringing this, this silliness to the world, you know, or to our world, you know, that we can escape from the stresses of the day, you know. And, and, and that's, I think, the motivation for both Matt and I, is that to know that we're making other people's lives. It's not just, it's not just this comedy. I mean, it's an escape for them. And so it's fun to hear that. It's fun to hear that you're, that you're helping people in, in different ways. Mm. Absolutely. And what do your <clears throat> students think? I'm sorry? What do your students think? You, you are certainly not the stereotypical instructor, or you know, maybe you are, but you've got some elements going on here that very few instructors have. I mean, you, you have direct ties to a legendary movie actor and, and you're at least outside of your own dojo best known for getting kicked in the groin yeah um it, it, the funny thing is is that a lot of my students are oblivious to all of that i don't use that to enough of my credit i don't you know i don't like i said the majority of my students are, are kids I, I mean i have a small contingency of adults but i don't i don't like um i don't think it's good for our kids to watch our show it's a little bit you know <laughs> not, not quite appropriate you know, every once in a while, a parent will come in and they'll recognize, you know, that, that who I am. And, and, and they'll even let their kids watch some of the more tame videos. So, but, but then again, you know, we'll get most of the people that come into the doors because of Mr. Speakman are adults. You know, they, they've seen the show and, uh, or seen his movies. And, but it's, again, it's, it's mostly, you know, just by chance that I, you know, as long a lot of, marketing struggling i you know I, some of the things that i've had to struggle with as a business owner because i again i loved martial arts but i've never been a really good business owner and so you know the the being part of jeff speakman's organization has introduced me to a lot of people and also with master ken like we went to premiere out of knottsville and i saw oh you mean you can make money out of karate school okay <laughs> I, I had no idea i thought you know my i had a job to support my karate school and uh and then and then um again with with uh, the culture within jeff speakman's organization he has uh, tony potter uh on topar seji and truett whelan and dan pribble they're considered to be his four horsemen um and dan pribble out of uh, california oak hills 
has really mentored me on the business aspect of it. Tony is more of uh, my inspiration when we train. He's constantly trying to, you know, sharpen my skills. But Dan's really trying to help me run a business. And I, I appreciate all, all of them. Even Truett out of San Antonio has always been more than eager to, to help me understand the business part of it. And But it's tough. I mean, like, because you would, you would think, oh, I can just go in and teach karate. And, and you know, it's like build the dreams, you know. You build the mat, they will come. Uh, no, <laughs> they don't. Even if even if you're associated with with an icon like Jeff Speakman, and you're out, and you have you know over seven million views on YouTube, um, they will not come. You have to go out and you have to get them. You have to figure it out. Dan has shown me the, how to do that. And since I've you know businessed up with him, our school's a, a lot more successful. And, and I, I've changed my focus. And my focus used to be, I just wanted to bang with adults. But now, you know, the business aspect is, again, you want to teach these kids. So we started an after-school program. We go pick up the, the kids from the local elementary schools, and we give them some homework time and then some mat time. And ultimately, like I said, you know, they'll be influenced by the time they hit junior high that, that they're the leaders, not the followers. That's good stuff. And yeah, I would say that the majority of martial arts schools, at least in the United States, are, if not financially struggling, they're not what they would call successful financially. You right. Know, success obviously can have a lot of different definitions. But your description of having a job to support your martial arts teaching habit right. you know, is, is far more common than I think a lot of people realize. It's something that comes up on the show. And honestly, there are a lot of behind the scenes conversations that listeners don't get to hear where people are, are calling me and saying, you know, I, I know you understand business. Can, can I just bounce some things off of you? All right. Because there, you know, there are resources out there, but there need to be more, you know, and hopefully that hopefully there are more. Well, you know, Century Martial Arts, you know, they have a business, you know, the masterminds and all that, you know, the, uh, and, um, I plan to team up with them a little bit. Hopefully I need to Frank Silverman out of, um, out of Florida. He's always been, just century has always been really helpful with the, the master Ken project, but because of the master Ken project, I was able to meet some of their business advisors and, you know, it's, it's hard juggling all those things, but that's on my to-do list is get to get together more with their business assistance that they have. And, um, but yeah, you know, um, my day starts out at 7.30 and I'm a bookkeeper by day, a martial artist by night and a, and a YouTube sensation, you know, in the wee hours of the night. I'm literally starting at seven in the morning and getting home at midnight after we film. And that's just, that's a typical day in the life. Outside of martial arts, you know, everything we've talked about today has been martial arts and hooked into martial arts. What are you doing when you're not training or teaching or, you know, on film or traveling for martial arts? Is it besides sleeping and eating? I mean, is, is there non martial arts stuff in your life? You know, the thing that, that I really uh, had, have had to sacrifice that I, that I hope to in the near future, all this stuff is going to pay off is, is being a, a husband and a, and a father. And I just, I just love my, my girls, my wife and my two, my two daughters, they're, they're twins. You know, we just, that is, that is, that is just, had to take a back seat to a lot of this stuff. And so that that's been what's really made our school become a lot more successful as of late as my wife quit her job. But that's one of the things that we found out is that, uh, you know, I have no business sense and she has it all. So when she was able to quit her job and start running the, the after school program, then, and then my kids started attending the after school program. Well, now I can kind of combine the two because of my, my long hours. Yeah, I can actually interact with them during the day at work. And, um, and then, you know, every once in a while we get lucky and I get to take them on one of our trips and, and spend some time. We'll, we'll plan it like a week later or a week earlier if we're going to do something like when, when master Ken was hired to go to Europe, which was an incredible experience. We started out, um, up in Scotland and then ended up in Germany. And I was uh, able to kind of piggyback a kid's vaca uh, family vacation on that and took the kids to Disneyland Paris and the wife and stuff. Cool. So that's, if I, if I have any free time, I try to, because other than that, there's, there's not a lot. So 
other than I'm sure they want more time with you than maybe mm-hmm. they get. What does your family think about all this? Oh, my, my kids don't get it. They're, they're, um, they're still young. They're like 10 years old. They, they kind of get the fact that, um, I'm on YouTube and that, the, um, that there are, there are, def- there are people all around the world who know Todd Woodland and Master Ken. They're always trying to get on the show. <laughs> <laughs> they want to be famous. Um, but they like, they, they, they don't, I don't think they really get it. Um, and to my wife's credit, she's amazing. You know, she, um, is so giving and she kind of picks up where I, I, I leave off. She's, um, like I said, she's running the, the, the business side of the stuff and then raising the kids when I'm out on tour with, with master Ken. So, um, I think she's eager for some of this stuff to pay off too, because we both have sacrificed a lot as far as time together and time as a family. And, you know, we're, we're not getting any younger. We want to be able to fl- reflect and um, say, you know, it was, a, it was a good time spent together. Mm. Mm. Totally. When it comes to your training, mm-hmm. you know, you, you've, got, you've got about as exceptional a role model to look up to as, as any of us could mm-hmm. ever hope for. Yep. But who else, you know, who else do you look to? Who else inspires you? Who else would you want to train with if you could? Well, you know, as I, you know, as I, I, I kind of spoke to a little bit, those, those four guys that Mr. Speakman um, has kind of taken in as his diplomats. Um, Tony Potter is, is one of my favorite people he to train with currently, you know, and, and again, unfortunately, I don't get to go as, as often as I'd like. But but he he lives and breathes his stuff. He doesn't have any other outside influences, so he's become prob- you know one of the top in the world in in our Kempo world. Now outside of Kempo, um, I so I want as well. I want to like I mentioned to you before. I've kind of gone full circle. I've gone back to uh, jujitsu. In fact, more uh, specifically, uh, the Gracie Combatives. I started training um, at New Mexico. Go Jiu-Jitsu Academy a couple years back with uh, Justin Hall's school, but more specifically with uh, Armando Sanchez. He's um, he's an incredible instructor, and he's he's also under Ralph Machado. Um, so I I get a I get a train with a lot of really cool people. I've been on the mat, you know, with 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 Mr. Uh, Superfoot Bill Wallace. Um, I wish I had his flexibility and his dexterity you know, for, for his age. Jeez. I mean, I, I can't even touch my do. toes anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> as far as training with, you know, the, the person, he's still alive, man. Then I, 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 just to keep me motivated to be the best of myself that I can be is, is Hicks and Gracie. I, uh, the choke, have you seen choke the documentary? No. Um uh man, it's this great documentary of Hicks and Gracie. I'll have to um, check that out. Where uh I will I will watch it to inspire me at least once a month, sometimes my fill my, my uh tank kind of kind of running low. Just the but this is the one this is um being a martial artist twenty four seven. He is he is a Gracie Jitsu from the moment he goes to bed to the second he wakes up in the morning. I mean, from the second he wakes up in the moment in bed, he, you know, whatever he's doing, yoga um, specifically to enhance his flexibility, his breathing. That's one thing in, in, in BJJ that I found is so underrated is breathing just because of pressure and, and being calm and being methodical. The breathing aspect of it is just if you can if you can control your breathing that calms you and then you're able to you know your strategy from there. So, hmm. right on. Uh, yeah, it, it, he's he's hard guy to get in touch with though. He's so popular. <laughs> yes, yeah, we we've made some forays into bringing some of the Gracies on, <laughs> and if you look through the the guest list, you'll you know that none of them have worked out. But yeah, there's still a future. Speaking right? in, Speaking of podcast, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, figure, wondering why Joe Rogan hasn't reached out to us yet. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you <laughs> got to reach out to him. Uh, maybe that's it. Uh, you know, that's the thing. We just like, you know, 
build the mat and they will come, you know, kind of right. mentality. That's got to get beyond that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's talk about movies. You know, I, I sure. would imagine that people bug you with this stuff all the time being a martial. I, I wonder how you're going to respond to this. Okay. Being a martial arts actor. You know, because uh, you oh, are. Oh, well, okay, cool. I mean, I, I'd love to get a gig. Uh, uh, Matt is currently on one. I don't know if I say that, but I know that he is, he's actually getting to use his martial arts in a movie. He's, I, oh, if he's cool. not there right now, he's either on his way to, but he's working with some, some really cool people right now. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I, would, I would love, uh, but I don't have an agent. I, don't, um, I, I haven't really taken, I'm part of this, the uh, Screen Actors Guild. I'm part of SAG. But I just, uh, I went to get an agent one day and I realized that I just don't have time. I got to figure out, you know, what my priorities are. And right now my priorities are my school and my family life. So to, to then throw in the acting part of it. And I think, you know, and again, leading by example, that's the same thing that Jeff Sweetman had to, the crossroads that he had to come up with. You know, it's like, do what, what do I want to be known for? Do I want to be known for an actor? Do I want to be known for, you know, uh, a, a martial artist? And um, it would be cool to, to take that, that little side road for a minute, but I don't, want, I don't, I don't have any ambition to, to, to become a, a full-time actor. I lo would love to get a couple of B-roll kind of, kind of things where, you know, like a cameo here and there. Mm. But, um, you know, and, and speaking of, of martial arts actors, you know, Jackie Chan is, that's, you know, he needs, he needs somebody, he needs, we need a, the next Jackie Chan, you know, somebody who can go out and do all, do their own stunts and yet do it in a comic way, you know. I, I wonder if we, if we could handle another Jackie Chan, if we would support yeah. Another Jackie Chan, because if, if you yeah. dig into history, I mean, the things that had to happen and just the era that he came up. Right. All the way from uh, what was it? Um, the the Burt Reynolds movie that he was in. That was the first thing I saw him in. Um, gosh, it, oh, I don't I don't, the, the, I don't the, know. The, that. Yeah. Where, where, they're, where they're Cannonball Run. He was in Cannonball oh, OK. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, from that. I, I didn't realize he was in that. Yeah, from Cannonball Run all the way up until now being this international star, you know, it took a while. It took a minute. It did. It did. And, you know, and, and so that's a hard thing to latch on for people to latch on to. Even, you know, like um, Jean Claude Van Damme, you know, Bloodsport, amazing. A couple of really good movies there after that, Lionheart and all those. But there, it's hard to stick. It's hard for those things to stick. Even Steven Seagal, another great um, martial arts uh, actor. Get a couple of good hits, but it's hard to maintain that. And the only person I think who had any real longevity in that was Chuck Norris, obviously the the icon that he is. Right, right, and I I think because he, you know, his his movies ended up with a, you know, a bit of a formula, you know, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful, but yeah, I think there's you know you look at Van Damme's early work, you look at Seagal's early work. They were a certain type of movie, but as those movies started to become slightly different, yeah, people just responded. Tom, to Tom Cop was cool, but way. then where do you go from there, right? <laughs> right, you know, Bloodsport is is a classic. Oh yeah, and and we overlook so many terrible things in that movie when we call it a classic. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I'm, I was about to say something about the perfect weapon, but I'm just going to hold back. You know, not a lot of Academy Awards in that, but a but a great movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. A phenomenal movie. And no, we, we probably uh, just out of respect to your instructor should not, <laughs> should not bring that into the conversation. Don't, don't yeah. want you to, you know, my, 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 that might be the part we were talking about editing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any newer films that you that you look at that, you know, mean something to you that you watch? I mean, you, you mentioned that documentary, but something in the more. Yeah. Let's see the modern martial modern. arts film space. Mainstream, you mean? Yeah, or, yeah. You know, well, there's really, you know, there really hasn't been a lot of opportunity for it. I think that's one of the things that, that Matt and I are really talking about. Is you know, everybody's always asking us, when are you going to bring back the show? And and the thing that that Matt is toiling with is he's like, should I bring back the show or should we do a movie? 
And more and more, it leans, I think, towards the movie part of it because the, there's nothing really recent that was um, that you can look at as far as martial arts go. You know, Jackie Chan's probably the closest thing. You know, because a lot of the stuff now is like your you, these um, John Wick and and yeah. uh, uh, the Born Supremacy or all those the things. Raid, yeah, the yeah. hyper violent, hyper. But in there's theory. not a lot of martial art in that. There's, you know, there's a lot of really cool action and the, the manipulation, some, you know, small, small close quarter manipulation fighting. But as far as martial arts go, I think there, there really hasn't been anything recent. So it might be time for us. And, and you know, and even the comedies that we've seen, the, the martial arts comedies that have come out recently, we're like, man, they've missed such a huge opportunity. And Speaking of formula, I think Matt has it. Matt has it figured out. He knows like what you you know, you know you're gonna have this much dialogue. Then within so much time, you need some action, and then after the action, you need some dr- a distraction, maybe with a pretty girl or something. And then from that, you need to go. I mean, his his directorial kind of insight on stuff with all the movies that he's been in, with the film study, the martial arts that he just studies, the 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 movies that have been iconic. Like you said, you look at them, they're and you go back and you watch him again as an adult, you're like, huh, I can't remember this being that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, but you don't turn it off. No, you're like, you're waiting for that next scene. You're like, oh, oh this is a scene that I was looking, waiting for. So I, but so I, I think that again, if when Matt does finally release the next big thing, I'm hoping that it'll become like the next clerks, you know, that, that cult following that just um, people really latch on to. I, I, I have confidence that, that it has the ability to do. It's just, will people pick it up? Right. And, and that's actually, that's probably a perfect comparison. You know, a movie that a lot of people really, really love, but not a movie that, you know, the Academy is going to look at and say, this is an exceptional film. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to send this to the SAG uh, uh, department and we want you to vote on it. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I, I would want to be in the room when, yeah. they, when they evaluated it. Uh, yeah. that, that, that would be hysterical. But, yeah, but again, yeah, you know, Clerks is a, is a really great idea because of the comedy that, um, that they had in that. I think that follows kind of like our same kind of dry humor that we do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Kevin Smith is brilliant in in a, a similar way that I could absolutely see that that Matt Page is is brilliant. Exactly. As well. Oh yeah, he studies him. He's gone. He's talked. You know, talked to him. I think when he's had opportunities, when whenever he's been in Albuquerque doing shows, Matt's always first one there to 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 try to get into the mind. Of yeah, his brilliance. Yeah. Right on. So let's talk about the future. Okay. You know, what's what's keeping you going other, other than I, I imagine having a really good time, you know, are there goals or there yeah. things you're trying to accomplish boxes to check? Yeah. You know, um, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. I, if I were to, you know, um, just from this day, looking backwards, I can, I can be pretty confident that this was, this was a pretty good ride. You know, I've, um, I've done a lot of things. If, a, if the 21 year old self was looking at the 52 year old self and say, you own your own dojo. You you got some some sim, some a little bit of fame on the internet. You got a great wife and family. You know, I think the twenty one year old would say, "Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that for sure." Get to know some really cool people. So that's my present, and that's one of the things that I've really tried to, as I get older, acknowledge is that the present is pretty important to me. You know, I don't want to be too far off in the past or too uh, up into the future because you know, we, if we spend too much time outside of where we are right now, we miss it. So everything that's going on right here, right now, I'm just really absorbing it and not focusing on anything else. Whenever we have an opportunity to do a live show and we're and that uh, just the adrenaline rush that you get by not knowing how it's going to go. We, Matt and I have this ritual, like right before they announce our names where we just look at each other and we just, you know, we do our thing. And then, cause you don't know how it's going to be. It's, it's all, it's all a question. You don't, are they going to like you? Are we going to do, uh, are we going to miss anything? And so that uncertainty is just so, um, 
invigorating. So that's, that's again, an instant, an instant in time, just, just really internalizing that instant and being one with it and just really enjoying it. And then, you know, we'll go on to the next instant when I have a group of 50 kids that just tested in front of me. And I remind them, man, it's instances like this, it's times like this that just gives me shivers. This is, this is what makes me just love being alive is to see you guys at this moment in time and how happy you are and that, that somehow some way I had some influence over, over that happiness and joy and all the sacrifices you made to get to where you are right here right now and really just take that second to enjoy it and then and then when I'm at home alone with my kids and my wife I just like I'm right here right now I'm I'm with you I'm I just want to be with you. I don't want to think too much about anything else. And, you know, and hopefully, you know, those kinds of instances will continue for a while. Awesome. If people want to find you, follow you online, you know, the, the Pastor Ken stuff, I mean, your school stuff, your personal stuff, give, give us all of it. Well, um, we are at ABQ Karate. Uh, uh, you know, um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it's actually abq-karate.com if you want to look for us online. We um, we welcome people to come in, fans of all sorts. We have people from other schools all over the world that will take side track their 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 travel plans just to pop in. And, and we encourage that. We want you to come in. We want you to say hi. You know, Matt has an office there that he sits at behind the doors where he's editing and, and writing scripts and, and coming up with ideas. Um, so when, and we're at, we're off of Bella where you can find our web, our address on our website. Um, I, if, I of course I have my Facebook page that you, you can look for, um, and friend me. And, and, um, one of the things I need to do that I'm again, this, this old guy, always a decade behind, I haven't gone on Instagram. I have an Instagram account, but I know I need to develop that. I'm going to try to get more engaged in that. Um, but. Like I said, I just if you're if you're in town, you're in Albuquerque, you want to come by, you know, just pop in. Right on, nice. And of course, we're going to drop links to everything that we just heard and, and all the other stuff that we talked about today at mm-hmm. whistlekickmartialartsradio dot com. So you can not crash your car if you're driving or something. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. I'm going to ask you for one more thing as we yes, we head out here. Okay. What parting words would you leave everyone with? Uh, say that again. I'm sorry, I got a little static there. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, parting words, words of wisdom, happy thoughts. You know, wh- how do you want to close this? I think just the way I, I summarized my future plans. It's just, um, just kind of. I think that if we all really focus on on what's going on right here, right now, it's really not all that bad. You know, I mean, there are people that obviously are struggling, um, but if you can just take a second, just to kind of recognize all the all the things that are going positive in your life you know just just kind of embrace that you know, it, it's because it's fleeting you know we're gonna wake up one day and be 52 years old and you're like man yesterday i was 17 so so really slow down the moments man take advantage man that was a lot of fun getting the chance to talk to someone who's had such an impact on so many lives And in such a powerful and positive way, I think humor is so incredibly critical to everyone's life and to a modern society. The ability to laugh, especially at ourselves, is so important. And I really appreciate all the work that Mr. Conway does to help facilitate that. So thank you, sir. Thank you for coming on the show. And I do look forward to talking to you again, as well as the next iteration of anything from Master Ken. If you want to find the show notes with all the things we've talked about today, head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, episode 428. You'll see everything we've got going, photos, links, you name it, transcript. And if you go to whistlekick.com, don't forget the code PODCAST15. Gets you 15% off a new sweatshirt, maybe a uniform or some protective gear. We work hard to make sure everything with the Whistlekick logo is the best we can possibly make it. The best ways to help us out, make sure this show continues. You can share an episode, leave us a review, make a purchase, 
or just help us out on social media. Comment here, there, all over the place. Help us engage with others. We love what we do. It's not just me. There's a whole team behind me here, and I appreciate every one of them. And I appreciate every one of you. So thanks for coming by. If you want to email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 